What happened to you, Cam? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I'm still hearing hearing you. Okay. So yesterday our um, topic will be all about how questions. So you still studied on your own last week? Yes. Okay. Alone. Alone. Oh. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> it sounds it sounds really alone. <laughs> okay, so of course you already know, right? If you were if you will be asked the question how, it talks about the process. It's a step by step process. Okay, so it's um it's not just only a short answer because you will be talking about a process. For example, you will be asked how are you going to eat an apple? What is your answer? Um, maybe um, I, 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 I saw a, a, an apple on the table and I really want to eat. Um, and another reason I like uh, fruits and apple is a good food so I can eat. So um, I think that's the I can answer um, for the question. Mm -hmm. So it means that you're going to give reasons why you choose to eat an apple. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're going to answer first the very question, how do you eat an apple? Of course, you're going to get an apple, wash it, peel it, slice it, and eat it because it's a process. First, second, third. But in, in our um, example today, yeah, it's like your answer. You have to give reason. Why is that your answer? So like, for example, the question, the example question is, how do you know your parents love you? So the example answer is, we call parental love unconditional, meaning that parents give top priority to their children under all circumstances. For example, they try to provide their children with better food, a better education, better medical care, etc. Parents are always ready to sacrifice their own well-being for their children's sake. We all know that their love is endless, endless love, but we don't know what real parental love is until we become parents ourselves. Parents may not talk about their love for their children, but we all know they will always love us. And I, I will always love you. Yeah, so the answer here is that the love of a mother and a father is unconditional. It doesn't matter what their kids are, whether their kids are ugly or what, fat, thin, um, stupid, or intelligent. They love their kids. Do you feel the same way? Or yeah. let me ask you the question. How, how do you know your parents love you? except that they give the priority to you other than your sisters uh, in my case i think uh, i can feel uh, really clear clearly about um, uh, my parents love uh, after every time uh, of course when i was a child uh, i can easy to get uh, many uh, priority things uh, from my parents but uh, when I got married, I also felt uh, the, the love uh, of my mother and my parents also follow me, uh, although even though I really grew up. And I think uh, we can, uh, me or many other people also, are the same with the parents' uh, love. I think so. Mm, I can't hear you. So do you think that all parents love mm. unconditionally? Mm. So come, I want to tell you that there, that just this week, you know Netflix, right? Netflix has different kind of, of um, topics and categories when it comes to releasing film. So nowadays, just this week, there is this very trending film about a father who killed his own wife who was pregnant 
and his two daughters. Have you watched that film on Netflix? It's very mm -hmm. trendy. No, I never watched that before. Mm. <laughs> you never watched that kind of film? <laughs> okay, I understood. So, because it's it's a real film, like it's a documentary film. It means that it hap it really happened in real life. So many people are questioning about, yeah, why did he do that? If we say that the love of parents, it's really unconditional. But it's his decision. <sighs> okay, Cam, how did you get your first job? Um, how did I get in prison? Uh, I, I think um, the real f uh, first job uh, I get uh, when I um, uh, graduated from university. And at that time, I, I don't remember, but uh, I think maybe my uh, flatmate and um, he, he asked me to uh, send um, my CV uh, together with him. And, and I remember um, the first company I want to join is the small company. And uh, I am, um, uh, my, my first job is the salesman in the uh, small company and I, I, I work uh, for them in a short time later, and then I, I go out when I want to find the, another job with higher salary. You quit. You quit your first job. How many years did you work there? Uh, I think it was about uh, six months. Six months. Ooh. Why is it? There, um, was the reason because of just salary or you have any other reasons aside from that? Um, yes, uh, there are many reasons at that time I want to quit. Uh, but I think the main reason is I want to find a new job with a higher salary because mm -hmm. uh, when I am graduated, um, I, I, I did not uh, receive the money from my parents. <laughs> and Maybe at that time, uh, the parent nurse uh, reduced uh, for me when I more grew up. But uh, another reason, I think uh, the environment in uh, that company not um, suitable with me and to find uh, another job. Yeah, I think so. Sometimes we want to have a higher pay, but one thing is really, uh, would really, you would really consider in moving out or transferring is, of course, your environment, which plays a very important role in your job. So, come just a question. How many jobs have you done, have you worked before you had your business? Um, I think uh, I saw it uh, some about four or five another company. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all the job I, I, I did in my past also related about assessment. Mm. Okay. So in my case, I think I have this, I have this um, limitation about working in, in one environment or let's say in one company. I think I can just work maybe six months to one year. And after that, you feel burnout and you want to transfer and i think it's not because yeah also because of the salary but sometimes you feel that you want to go to other places it's like one of the factors <laughs> um, i i always tried uh, to uh, work for a company in a um, long town mm -hmm. uh, but uh, sometimes i feel i really want to change uh, the environment for I can learn more knowledge and I, I need any other experience for myself. So, and uh, in my past, um, one time I really want to change uh, my jobs 
my job because I really want to come back my countryside for the learning with my um, uh, my parents. And I think that's also one reason really important to make me uh, want to change uh, my job. You are near your family. Like that. I think I, I already asked you the question, what if you were you will be given a chance to work abroad and now that you're with your family, are you going to choose to leave your family so that you can improve and upgrade yourself more? Maybe because uh, when I um, when I was single, I think uh, I can uh, easy to accept with the job um, when I have to live really far from my uh, my house. But uh, when I feel more old, uh, when I get older or <laughs> got married, uh, I really want to come back my countryside because. Um, I have to responsibility to when I, I need to take care of my parents and uh, my wife also need a job because she uh, living in my countryside and I think the best way I have to change um, my job and find the new opportunity uh, in the nearly my house for uh, every uh, other people around me feel really suitable. I think so. Yes, I think it's a dream of every of everyone to work where your loved ones are, right? Because they mm. said home is where the heart is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it's true for others, but for some it, it is also not. Okay, so let's go to number two. How can you persuade your children to study hard? Persuade, how can you encourage them to study hard? Um, yes, um, that's also the main problem with me uh, when I really want my daughter uh, have working in uh, our study hard. But every time I always felt uh, she really lazy and she just want to uh, play with other friends and don't care about the homework. Yes, and I don't know why, but I think uh, maybe my daughter really need her, so she need many time for play with uh, the same age. And yeah, exactly. maybe uh, the I don't have any way uh, when I want to to uh, uh, persuade my daughter to uh, study hard. Sometimes I have I try to serious with her, but uh, <laughs> she she learned uh, when um, when her tear uh, cry. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> you know, Gam, when you're telling me that, it's very funny because that's actually a teacher's character. So, um, as a teacher, you these students are like your kids, like you want them to be serious with their studies, but you can't just um, like tell them to really do everything that you want them to do. Because kids, like the age of your child or daughter, they really need to play. And I don't know, in the Philippines, actually the kids just study for four hours. Yes, it's they go home early. How about in um, Vietnam? Uh, my daughter uh, spent about eight hours in uh, her school and mm. come back after uh, 5 p.m. every She's day. She's six, right? Uh, uh, seven, I think more seven years old. Okay, so she's like grade one or like grade two equivalent in the Philippines. So grade one and grade two in the Philippines usually go home very early. And if you, in the Philippines come, one day there's only one subject that will give homework to the student. But I think in Vietnam, all the subjects, right? 
all subjects give homework. <laughs> Uh, yes, recently I uh, I heard my wife complained about my daughter homework. There are many other type of homework uh, she has to complete when uh, she leaves the, the school. Mm. And uh, when I saw her homework, I find some uh, strange homework like uh, music, uh, um, and, and many other uh, things really strange with me. And I remember in my past when I was the same age with my daughter, um, I don't have any homework when I come back my home. Just about months and sometimes it's just about uh, literature and don't have any more homework I have mm -hmm. to complete. But nowadays I feel really complicated. And there are a lot of work for my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Yeah, I think it's not also the kids, but more so, I think the kids should not have a lot, a lot of homeworks. Like those kids who just wanted to play, because we need to give them more time to play and associate uh, themselves to others, like in the community or to the neighborhood. But like in ages, like my IELTS come, they cannot, they cannot do our activity in the class because they have 11 homeworks. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and my, one of my students told me that their teacher in public school told them to write a letter to the Ministry of Education and beg, beg the Ministry of Education not to give them a lot of homework. <laughs> I told them no, it's impossible to do that. Yeah. So I guess um, the Ministry of Education needs to really think a lot about giving many homework. Maybe one one subject is good for one day. Okay, so let's go to number three. How can you persuade your parents that academic success isn't everything? Uh -huh. It's related to number two. <laughs> uh, I remember in my past when I uh, prepare um, everything for uh, uh, exam uh, when I want when I really want to um, uh, to join in the university. Uh, my parents asked me uh, a candidate about uh, teacher college. Because uh, the one uh, I became a I become a teacher. Uh, the first is the, maybe at that time really easy to find a, a, a job when I really want when I want to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And another reason is uh, they don't have a pay uh, any fee for uh, uh, for uh, uh, for. Um, teacher student, uh, but uh, I don't like that and I really want to be uh, to join uh, um, the university related about economic and mm -hmm. finally uh, they also to um, respect uh, my decision and uh, at that time I, I, I remember I told with my parents uh, in my case uh, the can um, academic is the best way for I can uh, overcome uh, for I can um, uh, to uh, achieve uh, with many other things really really better and at that time I think uh, academic is the only way to mm -hmm. to help me change my situation um, but after um, when I graduated from the university and especially when I um, I start my business, I think there are many other ways to to make me change my situation. And uh, sometimes I really um, I really thought uh, the academic not only way to support me and uh, Especially in the nowadays, we have a, we have many opportunity and easy to find out the the way uh, for 
by the the better future. I think so. Yes. So being excellent in academic is just one way of being successful because there are many um, successful people like they didn't have their own um, degree or masters or they're not doctors, doctor of philosophy and some of them didn't even go to school but they are successful. So it's just mean that success would not be measured by your um, academic grades. But people keep on telling us that education is the only way for us to be successful, when, especially when we were kids, when we were still young. But when little did we know that it's not true, it's a lie. <laughs> Not in, not entirely a lie, right? So how about you? How are you going to like tell your your kids about this? Are you gonna tell them to be really excellent in academics, or are you gonna tell them that academic isn't everything about success? Um, in my family, when my daughter. Uh, she wants to play with her friends and she don't want to homework. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, I tell her, uh, if you really want to do uh, the job really easy, I think in the future, uh, your life uh, so uh, really uh, hard and difficult. But uh, if you really want to, um, uh, to do the in a complicated job or hard working, I think in the future the life become more easy. Um, but I think uh, my daughter really a little for she can understand about the meaning from me. So every time she just want to play with other friends and every, in uh, yesterday when I uh, asked the learned English. Uh, she told me, uh, I don't want to learn English because I feel really difficult. Uh, and at that time, I told you, okay, you can don't, uh, um, you can don't learn English, um, but you have to do uh, homework. Uh, mm -hmm. You have been uh, three floors in my house and you can and finally, she tries. Uh, I really want to clean uh, <laughs> the learning English. Any idea? And I have it. And mm, she does uh, clean, and after that, she has to go out for playing with her friends. Yeah, in yeah. my case, too, if I will be given that choice, I would rather clean. Because you know, cleaning, it can, we can make it fast, but if you don't like something and you're studying it, it will take you a very long time. You just like my father Tom. My father told me that, remember before I told you that what, that was what my father told me, that I need to study and do this and that. Yeah, I guess your kids cannot understand that now, but who knows, right? You need to prepare, <laughs> prepare for the future. Yes. All right. Let's have number four. How much pocket money do you spend a month? Pocket money is like an extra expenses. It doesn't include basic needs such as food. Uh, it, uh... At this time, because uh, I spend all the time uh, in my study home, in my home, so I don't have any uh, occasion to spend money. And I think uh, this time I spend really little. I think so. But other time when everything become normally, I spend about, uh, I think, a bit, usually around. Uh, five to ten million dollars. I think so. For me. 
Oh my God! Aside from food and basic needs. No, uh, for for private uh, things uh, like when I uh, go out for working, uh, I have to spend for uh, engine and uh, food, coffee, uh, ah. sometimes yes, and many other things. It excludes the expenses in your house. Okay. You consider that as a different thing, but it's also necessary. The petrol in your car is necessary. So it, okay, it does not include. Let's have number five. How, how many hours do you sleep? Uh, I think about six hours a day. I think so. Six hours a day. Do you take a nap? Mm. I'm not sure, but uh, every time I always feel uh, really suitable and I don't have uh, find any problem with my health. I think that's a, a lot for me. Mm. And Viet it seems that uh, for Vietnamese people come sleeping at noon, like after eating lunch, is very important. Mm, yes. The snap are really important with uh, the almost Vietnamese people. Mm. Wherever I go, mm. I seldom met a person who does not sleep in the in afternoon. <laughs> it's power nap, something that can give you power. Okay, let's have number six. How many hours do you study English every day? Um, in my uh, timetable, I have a uh, 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 one hour mm -hmm. in studying uh, study English, and um, about one hour for um, listening to my video on YouTube. So probably about two hours a day for learning English. I think so. Mm -hmm. Two hours. Do you study Chinese now? Uh, I forgot <laughs> Chinese a long time ago. And <laughs> I, I thought I really want to come back and uh, start again with Chinese. Mm. You have a plan to go to China, right? What? You have a plan to go to China, right? Yes. Oh. So you're going to continue with a plan to go to China? Mm. Oh my God, you need to learn. <laughs> Maybe I'm more emotion. <laughs> <laughs> no emotion. But you like to watch Chinese movies, right? Um, yeah, some uh, Kung Fu Chinas I really want to watch. But uh, recently, uh, not much uh, Kung Fu Chinese from uh, what I can watch. Mm, I think so. Oh my God, there's a lot of Chinese movies, many historical, historical movies of China that are really good. Okay, so let's have number seven. Oh, you don't drink coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Milk. How many cups of milk do you drink a day? Um, in in my uh, in my family, uh, we have uh, many other uh, type of milk for I can uh, for I can drink mm -hmm. uh, equipment milk, uh, liquid milk, or mm, powder. Drop. The, Powder. The, I don't know. What? But <laughs> about um, one, one or two cup of mi milk a day. I think so. Mm. At least Three. one. One? <laughs> okay, so you're not like a baby <laughs> that always drinks milk. Do you drink? Yes. Because uh, in my 
I just uh, like knew about, um, uh, I think about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And in my past, uh, I also the same with uh, almost Vietnamese people when they don't care about milk and they they talk um, about milk just for the children. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I, I learned about economic, many teachers told me uh, milk really important uh, in life. But almost the people don't understand about the meaning of milk. Uh, the problem is uh, we we don't have uh, enough the vitamin or something like that in every meal. Uh, and that's why we have uh, to um, uh, intake uh, from uh, milk and uh, meal very important. So that's why uh, I try to uh, change my habits. And nowadays I, I feel uh, really suitable when every day I have to at least one cup of milk. Mm -hmm. I think so. You're used to it already. And you believe that milk really gives you vitamins and the nutrients that you need? Mm, I think so, yes. Oh, okay. So how about tea? Because tea uh, is very popular in Vietnam. Yes, uh, I don't like tea because uh, I can't sleep with tea or coffee. Yes, I don't know why, but my brain really um, uh, <laughs> feels uncomfortable and really uh, hard work, uh, has sleep when I drink uh, some tea, coffee, uh, or even the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those drinks or those um, things actually contains caffeine and it makes your brain alive and alert and awake and enthusiastic. It means energetic. <laughs> but there are coffees, uh, there are tea scams that are decaffeinated. When you say decaffeinated, it doesn't contain caffeine because there are teas that is good for sleeping. It can make your body relax and calm and you can sleep well, just like your milk. <laughs> Every time when I um, go to a coffee shop, I just ask uh, the waiter for me milk or uh, things like that. Looking about tea or coffee, yes. I find it so weird, Tom. Then you, for example, you go to coffee shop, and then you ask them, just give me milk. <laughs> um, milk, uh, uh, the um, the fruits from uh, uh, the tr mm. some drink from fruits like apple, uh, any other type of, no. of uh, fruits, yes. How about milk tea? Hmm? Milk tea, because milk tea is very famous. Ah, oh, yes, milk tea. I like milk tea. <laughs> matcha. Uh, matcha. Yeah, so there, you're also drinking tea, but it it is just mixed with milk. So try, try to make your own tea at home. You have to plant plant your own tea <laughs> okay so let's have number nine because number eight it doesn't apply to you so let's go to number nine how do you divvy up or divide domestic chores with your partner or with your wife uh, i don't know about divide up divvy it means how how do you divide um, share job, yeah. share the home job. Mm. Share your housework. I think you don't. Uh -huh. First, my partner in my home is my wife. And yeah. every, time, every time I rarely do share the chores uh, with her uh, because I feel I'm really bad uh, in 
the house chores and I feel uh, really uh, unsuitable uh, when I stay at home and especially when she asked me uh, support some uh, how how chores. I think so. That's why I rarely do share um, domestic chores in my uh, my house with my wife. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm. Can, be, can you observe that I think many of our lessons it asks you about domestic chores and household work, right? I think it is the meaning of that is for you to help your wife because we've been studying for long and then this question is always in our lesson about sharing or dividing the household chores you can sweep the floor <laughs> yes uh, i understand about the meaning of uh, when i'm sharing the homework uh, with my wife uh, maybe with the woman they feel uh, and receive the lovely from other people when someone else uh, really uh, want to share the how chores uh, with with them but in my case um, the first thing I think I'm really lazy when I don't want to do uh, uh, how chores uh, how chores uh, in my house and another reason I think I'm really um, I'm not good uh, with the uh, how chores um, uh, I really want I really don't to do anything in my house um, is of course it not uh, it's uh, it not I but I really want to to uh, to show my emotion with my wife. But I think uh, there are many other ways for I can show. And I, I never talked about the uh, domestic thoughts. That is the one way to to show my emotion or to support my wife. I think so. Is it not because you think that you are a man that you should not do these household chores? It's not because of that. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think a man or woman can do every same job. Mm -hmm. And when my wife uh, do better, many uh, uh, chores, that's also the same with me. I can't do the same with my wife. But in my brain, I don't know why. Um, I think I'm really um, not uh, rooted in how chores. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. It means it's not, you don't have the skill. Let's close that. Okay, let's accept that answer. Yes, right. then when my electricity in my house have some problem, I can't uh, fix the uh, problem. And every yes. time, yes, every time we also ask uh, another some younger brother to, to come to support. <laughs> my problem in my house and every time when some have problem in my house uh, my wife also understand and she never told me and she just uh, call for uh, her younger brother yes and come to fix everything in my house yes wow your hands are gold <laughs> never touches household chores that is why they said Cam, that a man, having a man in the house or in anywhere is very important because they often said that women cannot do like fixing the bulb or fixing anything that's related to electronics and gadgets. Yes, yes, I understand. Many times I, I think uh, with a woman or most of the time they need a uh, safety from uh, her husband mm -hmm. and safety uh, not from the money i can earn mm -hmm. and uh, safety uh, from the how many problems i can fix in my house that's really important and i understand that i don't want to, to, to try to change my problem i don't know why 
Okay, yeah, let's just accept the fact that not all people are the same, right? It's just like here in our office. Last night, Cam, because our gate, I think our gate's damaged or broken. And we're all girls here. And the only one who's left with the staff was the finance, the accountant. And she's a woman, and I asked her to ask for help. <laughs> Because she cannot go home and you know, she slept here Because we cannot close the gate. So that's one thing uh, She tried to call the guard and borrow the key, but the keys are not working also So I said, oh my god, we should we really need a man here Because if there's an emergency We cannot do anything. So she slept here <laughs> Because the door, the gate, the gate of the building is not working. That's one of the disadvantage. I wish women can do that, can also fix things like that. So you're a woman. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Just joking. I'm a lucky man when my wife um, rarely to. Uh, uh, concerned about uh, my my lazy and every time she also feel happy I don't know I'm not sure about it uh, true or not uh, true but oh. uh, some problem in my house she also uh, find a way uh, the best way is uh, ask another person to support and she don't want to tell problem with me that good <laughs> So you really like the eldest. You are the eldest of your of your wife. All right, it's okay. So let's go to number ten. How could you get a good deal if you were buying a car? Uh huh. Um, I think. Uh, if I want to buy a car, I uh, I have a um, I have a many many thing for uh, prepare. If I want to um, to have uh, some good deal with the seller, uh, the first I have to uh, I have to know how many uh, money I want to pay, and the second is the style <coughs> the style of I really want to buy. Uh, yes, when I fix uh, these uh, things, I think uh, I can find the, uh, the brand I really want to buy. And uh, depend on the time, depend on the uh, the markets. At that time, I have uh, some uh, reason for offer with the seller. And I really want to um achieve some good deal about the lower price or more time for quality i think that's in the best way you can offer with the seller mm. so you mean you need to like think about it and prepare about it not just oh i have money i want to buy a car let's go it's not like that so you mentioned before Tom, that there is a store like there's a there's a store that you can buy cheaper things and gadgets, right? Mm. Is it also the same with cars? Uh, yes, for example, in this time, I think uh, really hard for uh, sell out everything and especially to relate a car because the price really high and uh, not many people can buy uh, a car. So, because the market really low, and I think uh, at that time uh, the seller have to uh, inf uh, stress the pressure from the um, from their their boss. Uh, so they have to find out um, find every way for sell out, and that is a good time for I can deal with a lower price. I think so. Okay, so this time is a good time to buy cars. 
to buy cars and properties right but are you interested in like investing in cars or vehicles uh, actually uh, i don't think car is the the thing to show up with uh, other people about how i can reach other thing about car is the vehicle to protect uh, both my family can avoid the rain the sun and uh, the storm and especially in um, in my countryside uh, the the traffic really terrible and uh, when i when i earn the car i think at least i can uh, um, to support my whole family more safety. Yes, mm -hmm. I think. And in my job, the car is the vehicle really good for when um, the car support me in my job to bring many um, products um, to sell out. And that is a good way for I can invest uh, uh, my money for car than uh, motorbike, I think so. I think also the transportation is easier if you have your own car right because you don't need to wait for the bus and <laughs> to buy tickets like that so here here come in in vietnam i guess many people have their own motorbikes right there are many motorbikes especially if you go to ho chi minh but there is this um, place in Japan that um, one family owns one car. So a car for them is a uh, necessity or it's very necessary. So, but here in High Zone, I can see a lot of motorbikes also. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, the rate uh, of people on a motorbike uh, really uh, reduced uh, recently here oh. and after year. But uh, I can I can see the rate of the people who own uh, a car uh, really high. Mm -hmm. For example, in my um, uh, around my house, uh, in the first time when I came here. Uh, uh, I don't see, I don't saw many uh, car uh, on the street. But mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, every time when I drive my car, I I feel the street really uh, small because uh, there are many cars uh, parking on the streets and really hard for I can drive. Yes. And there are just three reasons about that. Maybe that that was just a visitor or the driver just parked and third it's really that your neighbor's car <laughs> so do you think the car um the price of car right now is low or it seems that people really need cars that's why cars are a lot in your neighborhood right now um yeah the first uh, i think um recently the uh, the price of car really low and especially when our government uh reduce many tax for mm -hmm. car and mm -hmm. that is the first opportunity for many a uh, younger couple um, can mm -hmm. earn a, a car um but i think um in the future the rate uh, of car in the family really high because uh, in my country um, the Vietnamese people really uh, uh, really uh, uh, prioritize for house and mm -hmm. uh, another thing after house is able to a new car that's why every people in my country uh, when they earn um, a house after that they have to find out um, uh, the way they can earn a new car own mm. not earn <laughs> uh, okay. would save a money and for buy a, a car earn for earn for a car well, 
that's really like if there was a question before what do you think is um, the thing that would represent your social status is it a house or a car uh, in my in my country uh, every people also talk about one idiom uh, one wife two trial uh, three three floor and uh, four wells. Mm -hmm. that's, that's One, two, three, four. <laughs> that's why every people also really, really like on on the car. And any story really uh, funny. And I think thus appear in, in my country. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, one younger couple, when they earn, uh, when they have a new house, they buy a new car uh, mm. with a uh, really expensive thus far to show up with uh, other label. But in, in, one, in one year, they just spend their car about two or three times when they want to travel by car. And every time they, they parking their car in the building. And I, I feel really, really, uh, really not safe and money. And that's why um, there are many uh, foreigner when they come to Vietnam, they also feel strange. So why the Vietnamese people so rich? Although the sa their salary is really low, they don't know why. And maybe they have to live in the Vietnam about five years or 10 years later, even they can understand about things. Yeah, I think so to come. That was when I first came to Hanoi, in Hanoi, okay, not in Vietnam. When I first came to Hanoi and I talked to like the director of a school, and but he's a Filipino and he told me that um, Vietnamese people have low salary, but they have a lot of savings. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't know if it's true or not. And I, I said, oh, maybe because food or basic need is is not very high. That's why they can save a lot. That's what I think. Uh, Vietnamese people um, also the same with the food or many other services, but uh, they have many um, uh, income really different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my government really uh, hard or control the net income of Vietnamese people because every time every people also like uh, paying by cash, not mm -hmm. by uh, cards. Card, things. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, it's really true that you need to really live in one place for a very long time before you can understand something. And sometimes even if you live there for one year, you will not really understand it unless you really go to locals local people like that oh i forgot to tell you there's this new movie vietnamese movie the title is rom i don't know how to read that it's very interesting and i want to watch that have you watched the trailer Actually, I rarely to watch uh, the Vietnamese movie. <laughs> why? I don't know why, but uh, in my past, when I was a child, uh, when I watched uh, a Vietnamese movie, uh, I easy to find out the uh, the end of film, mm -hmm. and that's why ah. I feel good. I never can and I don't see about and I don't see anymore with a Vietnamese movie. You think it's predictable. You can guess what will happen at the end. Yes. Oh, you can be a director. <laughs> yeah, that, that film come, that Rome, that film won an award in International Film Festival. That's why they screened it here in Vietnam in 2020. It was actually released last 2019 in Busan, Busan, Korea, and it won awards, I think. Yeah, that's why 
they show it here now, right now? Uh, yes, recently I uh, I saw many um, many Vietnamese people really like watching the Vietnamese movie. Mm -hmm. And yesterday when I read a newspaper on Vietnam Express, talk about some award of um, um, the Vietnamese movies uh, with the in the chat um, event in uh, um, another country. I think that's either really good for uh, uh, movies, and I like that, but I don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I asked my student about it because I saw her post on Facebook. And she told me that, oh, you can actually watch because it has an English subtitle. Yeah, so I think you can also watch that because it has English subtitles. So you will learn <laughs> what it is in English. <laughs> All right, so the cinema here come in Haizong is only one, right? Cinema. Mm, no, I think there are about uh, I don't know because uh, I, I never go to the cinema in Haizhou and I, I'm not sure about how many cinemas uh, in Haizhou. I think I was, I think I'm, I was here in Haizhou before you, because I saw the cinema, but I was just passing by, Lotte, Lotte Cinema. I think it's near here in this office. Yeah. So come, you have to try to also go and support your own film. I'm uh, promoting, I'm promoting a Vietnamese film to a Vietnamese. <laughs> what the heaven? <laughs> okay. About that, yes. I've only watched a complete Vietnamese film, just one, but it's a comedy. It was a comedy film, and I think the actor was was famous. And yeah, it's a bit um, okay, but my Vietnamese friend say, said it's not good. I think all people are like that. <laughs> okay, let's go to number 12. How did you feel? How did you feel when you first met your current sweetheart? It talks about the feeling. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, mm, I don't know how I can describe or about my feeling uh, with you. Um, Did you I, feel? <laughs> you know, I can describe or about my feeling in the first. Yeah. I will tell you a feeling and you tell you have to tell me if you felt that when you saw your wife because they said when you met the person that you will that you really like the world will stop <laughs> the world will stop and there will be slow motion do you understand Cam? Uh, a little bit there will be slow motion when you meet that person. Everything around you moves slowly. Uh -huh. Or it will stop. The world will stop. That's what they said. Did you feel that? <laughs> I saw everything uh, really in color. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> Pink color. <laughs> maybe it's cherry blossom. <laughs> Okay, so you cannot describe your feeling. Your feeling is indescribable. So it means that you were in love. Hmm. Well. <laughs> because they said down that when you feel like when you feel in love you cannot describe the feeling so that's mm. what you felt okay um, my feeling at that time really complicated mm. and i don't know exactly my feeling is 
but I think uh, sometimes really uh, love it. Uh, sometimes my heart uh, beat a lot. Not <laughs> on the table when I am um, uh, take her hand. Yes, I think so. I'm comfortable. Mm. Mm. I saw some something and it said that people should change the way they think about love because people think that you need to feel nervous like your heart should beat faster and you will feel uncomfortable to find that someone special but they said we have to find someone where we are comfortable with and we don't feel nervous like we feel that everything is okay that's what mm. uh, I think um, there are, uh, I think the feeling at that time really different uh, with the feeling of younger people nowadays because mm. uh, at that time we don't have any cinema or at that <laughs> time, some cinema we don't have enough money for uh, mm. uh, so every time we have to face to face, with my girlfriends and maybe uh, that's to uh, situation to make uh, my heart feel a uh, bit uh, faster and sometimes I feel really uncomfortable. Um, but uh, nowadays with many younger people, I think uh, they have a many choice, mm. uh, like uh, coffee shop, uh, cinema, uh, shopping or uh, some supermarket. And at that time, when the environment uh, really changed and crowded, they're easy to face with their friends and because uh, they have many things for talking. Mm -hmm. And right. we don't have any uh, anything for talking. Every time we can do uh, that, is to in their hands and talk sometimes talking about some really strange things. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, exactly. I believe in that. And and also now you can you can send messages before you actually met. Right? So it means that before you met, you actually become comfortable with each other already. And now relationship. No, <laughs> what? Think, now? No, now? I'm, Just before? Yeah. Yes. And now come many, many people are having a relationship just by sending messages and also breaking up on social media. Having relationship on social media and breaking up on social media. It's really different nowadays from your time. Mm. You think you're lucky? <laughs> yes, I think I'm really lucky. <laughs> For experiencing that. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so let's have number 13. Oh, I think this question is not applicable to you. How do you go to work or how do you go to school? Because you're working in your house, right? <laughs> I remember, Kam, I read before, it's not related to our class. I read a news last night. There's a new case of coronavirus in Haiphong. Mm, yes. Right? About a Japanese? Yes. You cannot go to Haiphong. <laughs> oh, NG, we're afraid that we're planning maybe, to go to Maybe you come to Haiphong. You will you will go to Haifa? Yes. Oh, you cannot go there. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't care because coronavirus with the Vietnamese people really normally and they don't care about that. That's what I think. Um, I think coronavirus is not here now. Yes. Right? Mm. No, every time when I saw the news on TV, 
uh, I also heard about there are many, many people uh, on the road with the coronavirus and there are many people died by virus. But in the Vietnam, everything's already peaceful and we don't care about that. that. And the most important thing with uh, Vietnamese people at that time is how they can uh, um, more hard working for earning money because at that time really a uh, time of the end of year. And uh, they, they need more money for pay in the test holiday and they don't care about virus. Yes. My God, it's almost dead, right? I cannot believe it. OMG. That was just that holiday before we planned. And now it's almost that holiday. Days are past. <laughs> you know, because some relig religious people come, they believe in God, right? And in, in God, if they believe in God, they have this Bible, like a book. And that book is saying that the end of the world is near. Mm. Do you get it? So they said that the reason why this, these things are happening around us, like the virus, like the bombs and the fire, all the disasters are happening because the world is about to end. Um, I... I never believe on the Bible or something like that. Mm. And um, on my on Facebook, uh, there are many people also believe on some uh, uh, important teller about the disaster happening in the near time with our world. So I don't believe that. I think um, the the human can control everything, and we will uh, exist in many, many, uh, uh, many time later, I think so. I hope so, that it's not true. <laughs> okay, let's go to number 14. How does one win in athletics? How about in life? So there are two questions here. The first one is all about sports and the first and uh, the second one is all about life. Mm -hmm. Actually, I in my past, I never saw <laughs> another. Uh, really? Uh, yes, every time I do a uh, private practice. How about I, when you were young? Do you don't have uh, any sports? Uh, yes, when I was tried, uh, I saw some uh, event athletic like a uh, football. But uh, I don't have any. I never win. <laughs> I never win. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you you cannot relate because you never you never um, won in any sports. It's okay. How about in life? I think you have something to say. How are you gonna win in life? Do you um, think you can stop the end of the world? <laughs> I think in if uh, when we compare about life, uh, the same with the uh, event of uh, sport. I think uh, in my life, I really lucky when I won many games. Uh, at least uh, in my family, I think at that time I have a good family. In business, I think I also have opportunity to earn uh, a lot of money than uh, other people in the same age. Mm -hmm. At that time, um, I'm not a top of our society, but with the average point in our society of uh, mm, common uh, background, I think not bad. So uh, if, um, if I tell about uh, one in life, I think I have uh, some achievement. I think so. A what? I think so. <laughs> you have done something mm. in you that yes. you can really win in life. So I've I've watched this 
drama come that I cannot really move on with this drama until now. I can I can still feel the emotion in the drama. So one thing that I've learned about that drama is that passion, being passionate about something is not enough. If you just have the passion, but there is nothing about it, it does not have any result. Right? So I think that's how you can win in life. Like you are very passionate about learning, but you're not doing something about it. So you don't have, you cannot earn a result. Um, um, I hear a lot about many, many people talk about if you have the first, first thing you have to uh, do is find the uh, person. Mm. But uh, in fact, I don't think that's it too, because uh, the first, uh, the person not to create the success for for myself. Uh, for example, when I graduated uh, from the university, at that time I'm I don't I I did not find the person uh, of myself. And uh, every time I can do at that time is uh, try to find the job with higher salary, or I can uh, I can't live on my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, year after year, when I am more success in the salesman, at that time I I think when I have uh, to some result in my job, the person will appear. So my mean is uh, a person appear after some results in my job and mm. uh, don't try to find uh, what my person is, try to do the best uh, job. And at that time, uh, I can find out the uh, my person. So that's why I believe uh, result to create the success, uh, result create the person and wow. person create. Wisdom. <laughs> you are full of wisdom, Kam. You're like Buddha. <laughs> yeah, so it means, Kam, that it's like the opposite way. Instead of really chasing or running or looking for your passion, you need to do something first, right? Like, you have to test. You have to test the waters and see where's your passion. How about you? Did you find your passion already? Uh, actually, I don't want to try my passion. What my passion is, I, I always like uh, do the the job I feel really like because uh, I think uh, I can um, I can talk about the uh, the best job I can do with my best result and. When I, I can do some something with the best results at that time, I also feel suitable. And when I feel suitable with my job, I have a many emotion to do uh, in the long time later. At that time, maybe with me, uh, that is the passion. I think so. So for you, I guess it's not passion, it's emotion. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, at that time, I'm really happy with my business, but in the long time later, the environment and every, everything changed a lot and I can't catch up with business. At that time, I have to find out a new job uh, for I can do with my best and best results. And at that time, I also find out the suitable in my life and things so. up. Okay. So yeah, there's a very good thing that you said today, we should not look for our passion but we should try and see the results wow last question how much money is enough money again oh my god what they always want money and house chores <laughs> uh, my my target uh at the moment is I, I want to complete the uh, million dollar. And million dollar. 
Uh, when I get about one million dollar, I think at that time is the first step for I can uh, feeling about my success in life. Yes, I think so. One million dollar. Good luck. <laughs> I think you can get that count. Okay, so do you have any questions about how? Uh, today is uh, the, the end of our class, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, do, you want... do you want to, you know, to uh, uh, start study English with me? Are you the teacher? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, uh, Sam, what? And uh, but uh, maybe at that time uh, she had to go out for uh, control the uh, subject. So I'm not sure about she can join with us. But uh, anyway, I, I I just want to practicing with you in uh, in the next class. And um, maybe you really busy, but uh, I, I need to we fix uh, some uh, timetable. Or uh, I can't practice things so. up. Okay, so is it if uh, is it possible that maybe someone will join in our class aside from Anna? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can do just the same, the same time. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Friday. Yes, but we have to start next week. Okay, anything? Uh, no, I don't have any question. Okay, have... yeah. So you have to work and find the result. Okay, Tom, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Bye.